Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Unit 3 pre-released case study for the March 2023 examination. We're going to look at the case study 1 today. At the end of the video I'm going to leave a link to a 60 question video I've created in order to test your comprehension of the case study. So look out for that later on in the video. Starting on page number 3 the case study is all about a lady, Christina, who's 56, and her two adult children. I'm going to read through each paragraph, and then I'm going to go through and analyse some of the key themes and interrelationships within the information. So, let's start off with paragraph 1. Christina, 56, is semi-retired after spending many years in senior management through a large financial services firm. Christina now works occasionally as a consultant, working an average of two days a week. Now from this first paragraph we can see Christina is obviously at the latter end of her life cycle. She is semi-retired after spending many years in senior management for a financial services firm. This suggests that she is very knowledgeable about financial services. Later on in the case study, will find that her daughters want to know more about investing and therefore the advice that Christina gives we could say is highly likely to be very good advice. She now works as a consultant an average two days a week essentially meaning that she is reliant upon her investments to fund as it says later on in the case study her mandatory expenditure. Paragraph 2. Christina was married to Jonathan until he passed away a year ago. This prompted Christina to reduce her workload and access some of her pension provision and established investments. She used her pension provision and investments to clear her mortgage and provide an income that pays her mandatory expenditure. Her pension fund is now lower than what she intended for her retirement, as she took some of her pension earlier than originally planned, and her remaining investments are currently worth £200,000. So, unfortunately, Christina's husband passed away a year ago, and it prompted her to make some big decisions. To reduce her workload, firstly, so it seems like she is obviously semi-retired now, but not long ago she used to work longer hours, we can assume. And it also prompted her to access some of her pension provision and her investments. So she used them to clear her mortgage, so she's mortgage-free now. So that presumably took a significant chunk out of her monthly expenses. And it also provides her an income that pays her mandatory expenditure. So potentially she might have got something like an annuity or something like that. But nonetheless, it covers her mandatory expenditure. So apart from that, she's just got discretionary expenditure and essential expenditure to worry about. Her pension fund, of course, is now lower than what she originally intended for her retirement because she took some of that out in order to pay off her mortgage. But nonetheless, her remaining investments are still currently worth £200,000. We'll see later on that a significant proportion of that is from her Scottish investment fund. In fact, it's worth over £100,000 of that £200,000. So you may say that that's not that well diversified as over half of the investments are with one single provider. Looking at the third paragraph, Christina and Jonathan were married for 28 years and raised two daughters, both of whom are financially independent and have successful careers. Hannah, 26, is a pilot, and Stephanie, who's 25, is a mechanical engineer. Christina and Jonathan managed to pay for their daughter's education and training costs using the portfolio of investments they had started when they were young. So, they were married for obviously a, a long, long time, 
and they raised two daughters. Both of these daughters are in their mid-twenties and they're financially independent with their own successful careers, Hannah being a pilot and Stephanie being a mechanical engineer. Now they obviously, as it says later on in the case study, their aim was to give their kids the best possible uh, childhood possible and they wanted to pay for their daughter's education and training and therefore they utilised the money that they got from their portfolio of investments to pay for their daughter's education and training costs. They started their investments when the daughters were young and obviously and invested for the long term and able, uh, to enable them to mature. Christina and Jonathan, paragraph number five, did not come from wealthy backgrounds, but were, were determined to provide the best for their children and committed to regularly investing from a young age. Their aim was to make as much money as possible for their children, and they were willing to take the risks required. After they had paid for their daughter's education and training, their focus was then on retiring as early as possible. So they didn't inherit significant amounts, we can assume, as they did not come from wealthy backgrounds, but they were determined to provide the best for their children, and they regularly invested from a young age. Now they wanted to make as much money as possible, and it seems like they were quite the risk takers, as it suggests that they were willing to take the risks required. So this suggests that they did not just stick to low risk investments or savings accounts for example, they may have taken significantly more risk in the hope and possibility of generating higher returns. Of course, once they paid for their daughter's education and training, their focus shifted to retiring as early as possible. The sixth paragraph on page number three Recently, Christina's daughters wanted to learn from their mum's experience and find out how to start investing to achieve the same financial returns. Christina was happy to share what she and Jonathan had done over the years, but her daughters were horrified to learn that Christina's investments could have been invested in unethical companies, as Christina is not aware of her investment choices. Christina explained that the investment return was most important, rather than the companies being invested in. So this is quite a pivotal paragraph, this is. Christina's daughters are interested in investing too, and they want to benefit from their mum's experience. Later on in the case study, we see three potential options for Christina's daughter, Hannah. And, um, and this is the first sort of understanding we get that her daughters also want to invest. So the case study is not talking about Christina's eagerness to invest more, it's talking really about her daughter's eagerness to invest. Now Christina shared her expertise about what herself and Jonathan had done over the years, but it seems that her daughters were horrified to learn that potentially some of Christina's investments could have been invested in unethical companies. Christina is not aware of her investment choices, and that's quite common. I'm just going to zip through to the final few pages. Christina has chosen the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, which she's got over £100,000 invested in at the moment. So this is an investment trust, and essentially what happens is Christina is, well, some time ago she invested £10,000 into it, and she's essentially reliant upon the trust investing on her behalf. So it's not necessarily down to her what that trust invest her money into, whether it be companies, shares, stocks, etc. Um, but obviously it's shocked her daughters because Christina was not necessarily aware of what the trust has put her money into. Christina explained that for her, the investment return was more important rather than the companies being invested in. So that's a clear difference between Christina's view and the views of her daughters, who were obviously horrified to learn that potentially money could have been invested in unethical companies. 
Towards the bottom of page number three, Hannah wants to start to invest some money towards her future retirement. Hannah is single, has worked as a pilot for a long-haul airline for three years, and has built up a savings fund for emergencies. After reviewing her budget, she has £300 per month to invest. Hannah would rather invest in ethical-only companies that have a proven track record of performance, or a long-term strategy as she appreciates that investment return is also important. Christina feels that you cannot have the same return if you are too specific when choosing who you invest in. They all agree to research the best investment fund to invest in in the future. So another really important paragraph. Hannah wants to invest some money towards her future retirement. She's single, so she's only got the one income, as far as we can tell. She's worked as a pilot for a long-haul airline for three years. We can assume that as a pilot, she earns a significant amount of income, and she's built up some savings to use in emergencies, otherwise known as a contingency fund. Now, she has £300 per month to invest after reviewing her budget, so £3,600 per year. And it's very clear throughout the case study that Hannah would rather invest in ethical companies. In fact, later on in the case study, if I just fast forward to it, she's chosen the 91 Global Environment Fund. Now, this is in a responsible investment advance portfolio, and... As I said earlier, it's all about being a responsible business, um, really all about environmentally friendly um, investments. So she's very keen investing on investing in that sector. Her mother believes that you may not have the same return if you're too specific. However, later on in the case study, we'll see some research that actually suggests that investing in ethical organisations is actually potentially more lucrative, so far as the return is concerned, than investing in non-ethical organisations. So, Hannah wants to invest in ethical-only companies that have a proven track record of performance. Later on in the case study, we'll see that one of the three options was only actually launched in 2019, so only three or four years ago, and therefore potentially this would be less attractive to Hannah because they've not got a proven track record of success. Christina feels that, as we said, you cannot have the same return if you're too specific, and they've gone away to research the best investment funds to invest in. So, part way down page four, it starts the research section. The first article looks at a move towards ethical investing and how it is important to assess your own priorities towards whether it is a strong return or an ethical return that is more important. Now, this first article is provided by Investopedia.com. It starts, Investing in unethical stocks, the pros and cons for traders. While the concept of Ethical investing has a long and well-documented history, it is only recently that it has assumed widespread acknowledgement. This is largely due to the growing sense of social responsibility that exists in modern society, and has led to the cultivation of specialist ethical investment funds for those with a wider level of global awareness. So we can see this first article looks at moving towards ethical investing and it says how important it is to assess one's own priorities, whether it's a strong return or an ethical return that is more important. Now that very statement suggests that you've got to choose between a strong return or an ethical return. However, as we said later on in the case study, we'll actually see another article which suggests that ethical returns don't have to be lower returns than non-ethical returns. Now, although it has a long and well-documented history, it seems that it's only recently that Ethical Invested has got the exposure it's largely due to the growing sense of 
social responsibility now that exists in modern society potentially because of the spread of information has got that much quicker through things like social media for instance. The second paragraph in that article Despite the movement towards ethical investing, there are still many companies that engage in less than savoury practices that still attract investors. With most investments, there are pros and cons to investing in unethical stocks, though at the end of the day, it comes down to an individual's own moral compass. So as we learned earlier on, it seems that Christina feels that the ethical investing isn't as important as her daughters feel it is. Many companies still of course engage in less than savoury practices and we'll hear about some of those less than savoury practices uh, shortly. But there are pros and cons to investing in unethical stocks. In some cases it may be that there is a higher potential return. In some cases, of course, lest we forget that being ethical, of course, costs money and therefore may reduce profits of organisations. However, as Investopedia.com suggests, it really does come down to an individual's own moral compass, whether they decide to invest ethically or unethically. The article continues, unethical investing refers to making investments in companies that are documented to engage in questionable business practices. Companies that sell products that are known to be harmful, such as tobacco and alcohol, can constitute unethical companies. In more extreme cases, companies that engage in practices that are clearly wrong, such as harsh working conditions, unfair wages and child labour, are also considered to be unethical companies. So, more information about what unethical investing is there. Companies that sell products known to be harmful, such as tobacco and alcohol, can constitute unethical companies. In their very nature, these Companies are inherently unethical, some would say, because they sell products which are harmful, like tobacco. In more extreme cases, obviously, engaging in practices that are clearly wrong, such as harsh working conditions for employees, unfair wages, and of course child labour, are obviously considered to be unethical practices. At the bottom of page number four, investing in companies that engage in legal activities but sell morally ambiguous products such as tobacco can be profitable due to the high demand and addictive nature of the product. So just like Christina suggests later on in the case study, there are some morally ambigu ambiguous products such as tobacco which can be hugely profitable and therefore generate significant returns for shareholders or, or investment trust investors due to the high demand for those products and of course the addictive nature of nicotine within tobacco. Moving on to page number five, companies that engage in illegal business practices such as child labour often see damage to their reputation and profits as most of society draws a clear line between such morally wrong practices. So very clearly this first paragraph on page number five sets out that there are illegal business practices such as, as we discussed earlier, child labour. The companies that engage in these sorts of practices will see significant damage to their reputation and profits, as the vast majority of society draws a clear line between such morally wrong practices. And therefore, it's worth noting the difference between, as it says on the previous page, companies that might sell products that are known to be harmful, companies that engage in practices that are clearly wrong, Companies that engage in legal but morally ambiguous products and of course illegal business practices. All of those can be classed as unethical but I guess we've got to assume that there's a scale. There is 
unethical and then there's very unethical business practices. The final paragraph of Investopedia.com suggests that ta your task as an investor is to balance the need for profit with your own moral standards and create a portfolio that reflects your most earnest personal beliefs. Of course, each individual investor has their own moral standards and Investopedia at least suggests that they need to create a portfolio that reflects their most earnest personal beliefs and balance that with the need for profit. Once again suggesting that having a portfolio that reflects your personal beliefs and moral standards reduces potential profit. However, once again, later on in the case study, we will see that it's not necessarily the case that just because you have moral standards and want to invest ethically, that your profits or returns need to fall. It's a key point of this case study that ethical investing need not lead to reduced returns. So next up, are some definitions of what are sustainable ethical and ESG investments. The first bold type on page five, what is sustainable and ethical investing? Sustainable and ethical investing is about investing in those companies and sectors that are at the heart of the transition to a more sustainable world and that are positioned to grow and benefit from this transition as well as providing a way for people to invest in line with their values, sustainable and ethical investing creates exciting investment opportunities. So, sustainable and ethical investing, investing in companies and sectors that are at the heart of the transition to a more sustainable world. A key term we can talk about here is green investing, um, a buzzword in business uh, in, in the current climate, but also those organisations that are positioned to grow and benefit from the transition. The fact that they're in a good position to grow and benefit from the transition suggests that ethical and sustainable investing might be a, a wise thing to do for future growth of, uh, of investing, uh, of investments. Of course, it also suggests that it creates exciting investment opportunities for the future. Some of this technology is, of course, new and therefore, in a rapidly expanding sector, it could be very exciting to see the, the growth on offer from some of these investment options. The second bold type on page five is all about different sustainable and ethical investing styles. Now, when it comes to being green with your money, there are a number of different investment approaches, and these are evolving all the time. Common approaches include ethical investing. Ethical investing is the oldest form of investing in the sector. With this approach, you invest in line with your ethical principles and exclude companies that you consider unethical. For example, tobacco or weapons. So, this is in line with your own ethical principles and excludes companies that you consider unethical. We mentioned earlier that there is unethical and then there's very unethical. To some people, uh, there might be some companies which they would perceive as unethical, whereas others may, may see them to a lesser extent unethical. Obviously, tobacco and weapons inherently unethical because of course they uh, they are have the potential to do damage to people but of course uh, with their addictive nature uh, tobacco that is um, it could potentially increase returns for for shareholders ESG investing stands for environmental social and governance alongside financial returns this approach uses ESG or environmental, social and governance factors to evaluate how sustainable companies and countries are. So ESG investing looks at 
financial returns alongside these ESG factors. Well, how about environmental factors? These include biodiversity, climate change, raw materials, and water scarcity, pollution, and waste. So, real key points for uh, evaluating how sustainable companies and indeed countries are. So, are they uh, taking raw materials without replenishing them in a sustainable fashion? Are they uh, taking water out of the earth um, at, an, at an undue rate? Are they causing significant pollution or indeed significant waste product? Social factors at the top of page number six include labour policies and community relations, product safety, supply chain sourcing and social impact reporting. So social factors such as labour policies, how well are you treating your employees, and community relations, how well are you treating the local environment and the local community? Are they happy that that organisation, that company is located near them, or does it cause them more grief than benefit? And then we have governance factors, which include shareholder rights, diversity, business ethics, and transparency. So this is how the, the organisation, the country or the company is actually led. What is its leadership like? How diverse it is, is it? How ethical is the organisation? How transparent are they in their business dealings? And then we come on to sustainable and responsible investing. Sustainable and responsible investments are wide-reaching terms that incorporate a range of ESG factors and themes to focus on companies that can grow sustainably over the long term. This includes companies that are positioned to benefit from changing trends related to ESG issues and or have a positive impact. So, once again, wide-reaching terms that incorporate a range of ESG factors and themes to focus on companies that can grow sustainably over the longer term. The source for this information is Evelyn.com. Evelyn.com are experts in wealth management. That is their forte, and therefore we can rightly assume that they are experts in different types of investing, including ethical, ESG, sustainable and responsible investing. Now the next article considers if you must make a choice between investing ethically and providing a good return. As we've seen, there's been several uh, things noted which imply earlier on in the case study that investors have to choose between a good return or being ethical. And this article actually puts the argument to rest and suggests that actually you don't reduce your potential return by investing ethically. Let's have a look. So does responsible investing come at the cost of returns? There is a notion that adopting a responsible investment approach will negatively impact financial returns. But this is a frustratingly persistent myth, according to Kate Elliott, head of Feth Ethical, Sustainable and Impact Research at Rathbone Green Bank Investments. So just to reiterate, there is that notion and it's widely believed by many people that adopting responsible investment approaches will negatively impact financial returns. However, the head of ethical, sustainable and impact research at Rathbone Green Bank Investments says it is a frustratingly persistent myth. Of course, Kate Elliott is head of ethical, sustainable and impact research, so we could say she's potentially slightly biased in, in this respect, but nevertheless, she continues, There is now a significant body of research to support the view that taking environmental, social and governance factors into account in investment decisions does not have to result in lower returns. Indeed, several studies suggest the opposite, and that a responsible investment approach may help to enhance long-term returns. Now, as Kate says, there is now a significant body of research 
but it supports that taking these factors into account in your investment decisions does not necessarily result in lower returns. As we've seen earlier on in the case study, investing in companies that are positioned to grow and benefit from this transition is actually quite a prudent move to make because potentially that could lead to long-term growth in the value of investments. At the bottom of page number six, Jamie Govan, Senior ESG Investment Manager at Aberdeen, this organisation used to be Standard Life Aberdeen, PLC. It is an organisation that enables clients to plan, save and invest for their futures. Cites a 2019 paper by the Morgan Stanley Institute for Sustainable Investing, which details research conducted on the performance of almost 11,000 mutual funds between 2004 and 2018. The analysis showed there was no financial trade-off in the returns of sustainable funds compared to traditional funds. Once again, there could be potential for bias in this paragraph. Jamie Govan is a senior ESG investing manager. Um, of course, ESG standing for Environmental, Social and Governance, as we've learnt earlier. And he cites a paper by the Morgan Stanley Institute for Sustainable Investing. So once again, potentially some bias in this paragraph, but nonetheless, the research conducted was on the performance of almost 11,000 mutual funds and over a significant amount of time, 14 years. So we can reasonably suggest that that research is, is highly reliable and highly valid. The analysis showed there was no financial trade-off in the returns of sustainable funds compared to traditional funds. And later on, we'll see another example of a, a bit of information that backs that up. So page number seven, Jack Turner, an investment manager at 7IM, raises the concept of portfolio theory being based on the premise that an investor moves further away from their optimal portfolio as they limit their investment universe. So Jack Turner, an investment manager at 7IM, which is an organisation that provides infrastructure for financial advisors, he raises the concept of portfolio theory being based on the premise that an investor moves further away from their optimal portfolio as they limit their investment universe. So essentially what that means is, as Jack says, as investors start to limit the potential investments they are able to make, potentially because they're saying they're only going to invest in ethical options, then it may limit their overall optimal portfolio. Now, of course, different people may see and judge a portfolio being optimal differently. For example, some may see a high returning or high returns portfolio as, as more optimal, whereas others may seem a sustainable or ethical portfolio as more optimal. Page seven continues. But the real world is a lot more complicated than that, he adds. Would shrinking your universe by avoiding companies that rely on fossil fuels harm returns if they are more heavily regulated in the future? How profitable will tobacco stocks be if people in the emerging markets cut back on smoking? The time horizons of your investment will have a big impact here. This information from Jack Turner, the investment manager at 7IM, is a real key paragraph. As it says, the real world is much more complicated because if you choose to avoid companies and, in that, in, and therefore limit your investment universe, in the words of Jack Turner, by avoiding companies that rely on fossil fuels, you could be... Uh, said to be ethical or sustainable in your investment choices. However, as Jack says, there will be a benefit to that because potentially those 
fossil fuels will be he more heavily regulated in the future and therefore they will deliver less returns. On the back of that, he also asks how profitable tobacco stocks will be because as people stop smoking, especially in emerging markets where the trend is, is reducing, potentially it might well be that tobacco companies generate a significantly less return than they currently do. And therefore, the time horizons of people's investments will have such a huge impact. Essentially, how long do they wish to invest for? Is it just for the short term, and therefore, potentially, regulations will not change too much in the short term, or, or the uh, emerging market trends on smoking, for example, won't change too much? Or does... Do people intend to invest for the long term? Now, a key point, of course, is that Hannah earlier on mentioned that she wants to start saving for her retirement. Now, Hannah is in her mid-twenties at the moment, so we'd assume that the investment she wants to make is for the long term. So her she's got a very long time horizon, and therefore it may well be worth Hannah making... Um, more ethical, more sustainable choices in our investment because it will pay off in the long run when, as Jack Turner says, fossil fuels are more heavily regulated and tobacco stocks are less profitable. The source for that is the ftadvisor.com. And then we move on to the final article, which shows how ethical and non-ethical investments have been compared in the UK, where there is more to consider past the headline. It begins, ethical funds fall short of non-ethical over 12 months. Now that headline is, is, is quite strong. It shows that over the last 12 months, ethical funds have fallen short of non-ethical funds. Essentially, leading us to believe that it is more worthwhile to invest in non-ethical funds, at least over the last 12 months. But does that, is, is that the end of the story? Well, let's have a look at the paragraph. Ethical funds have failed to outpace non-ethical funds over the past year during a notable period of stock market volatility, according to the latest analysis by moneyfacts.co.uk. Despite more subdued returns, ethical funds have outpaced non-ethical funds in previous years, and during 2021, investors were keen to place their cash in responsible investment funds amid global attention for investing greener. So that paragraph, as it said, in a period of stock market volatility, like there was um, over the past year, um, ethical funds have not done as well as non-ethical funds. So potentially in periods of volatility within the stock market, this suggests that it may be more wise to invest in non-ethical funds. However, as we'll come on to see, ethical funds have performed much better over the long term. So once again, as Jack Turner said, time horizons of investments have a big impact. And potentially, if you are just a short-term investor, during stock market volatility periods, it may be worth or may be better to invest in non-ethical funds from a purely returns point of view. However, if you are investing for the long term, ethical funds may be more of a wiser choice. It continues, ethical funds overall returned 3.97% over the past year versus 6.06% for non-ethical funds. But overall, ethical funds have outperformed non-ethical over longer investment periods. So we can see from this table, over the past year, 3.97% return for ethical funds, and that is all ethical funds, remember, so this is a, an average, so there will be higher performing funds, and there will, of course, be lower performing funds. So that essentially means that 
this is just an average and we don't know necessarily the methodology used to to, to draw um, these conclusions. All non-ethical funds however uh, performed better in the last year at 6.06%. However when we look at the three-year trend ethical funds produce 32%, non-ethical 25 and the trend continues the longer we look back. So five years, 47 and 34 percent. Ten years, it starts to really open up, 146 percent and 114 for non-ethical funds. And then over 15 years, all ethical funds delivered 188 percent, whereas non-ethical funds delivered returns of 156 percent. So, some really interesting research there by moneyfacts.co.uk, which suggests, if we interpret it, that over the past year, ethical funds have not done as well as non-ethical. However, for every other measure, 3, 5, 10 and 15 years, ethical funds have outperformed non-ethical funds, which, if I just skip back, agrees with the viewpoint of people like Kate Elliott and like Jamie Govan. So moving on to page 8 then. After Christina and her daughters have done their research, they have all chosen the following funds. Option 1. Hannah's Research. Hannah has chosen the 91 Global Environment Fund. This fund has an 89.3% return over the last three years. However, the fund was only launched in 2019. The fund is included within our Responsible Investment Advanced Portfolios, which look to invest in companies that either have a solution to the environmental issues we are facing, or is a company that is transitioning to becoming a responsible business, says Isabel Jingle, Investment Director at Brooks McDonald. So, the 91 Global Environment Fund, 89.3% return over the last three years. So when we compare that to the, uh, the ethical funds within the moneyfacts.co.uk table, we see a significant increased return for the 91 Global Fund compared to all ethical funds. 89.3% compared to 32 0.63%, so significantly higher. However, the fund was only launched in 2019, and as we said earlier, Hannah is eager to choose an investment which has long-term um, track record of success. If we just skip back to previous pages, at the top of page 4, Hannah would rather invest in ethical-only companies that have a proven track record of performance. Is three or four years a proven track record of performance? Only Hannah knows. Uh, obviously, it's up to her, but the fact it was only launched in 2019 might make it less attractive than a fund which has a greater track record of performance. It goes on, of course, the fund is included within our Responsible Investment Advanced Portfolios, and these are companies that either have a solution to the environmental issues we are facing, or companies that are transitioning to becoming responsible businesses. So therefore, this seems to meet uh, the demands and desires of HANA for ethical, sustainable investing. We expect that there will be a rapid increase in businesses coming to the market, says Isabel Jingle, that provide a decarbonisation solution, and it is a major theme for governments, as can be seen from Boris Johnson's announcement that all electricity in the UK should be produced from clean sources by 2035. So, according to Isabel Jingle's predictions. She predicts there will be a rapid increase in businesses coming to the market that provide a decarbonisation solution, taking carbon out of the atmosphere essentially. And it's a major theme for governments. She, the the uh, 
the information she used to justify this is Boris Johnson's announcement that all electricity in the UK should be produced from clean sources by 2035. So therefore, producing electricity cleanly would, of course, fit with the decarbonisation, and therefore, once again, suggesting that the 91 Global Environment Fund is a good fund for Hannah to choose based upon her environmental, ethical and sustainable desires. Once again, however, we may take that in with a pinch of salt, just because there may be some bias on Isabel Jingle's part, suggesting that um, there'll be a rapid increase in businesses coming to the market. And therefore, we have to take that with a pinch of salt. However, we could also suggest that because there'll be a rapid increase in businesses coming to the market, there might be increased competition within the market, and therefore this might reduce prices and therefore reduce profitability of these organisations. Something else to consider. The source for that was thisismoney.co.uk. Moving on to option two, Stephanie's research. Remember, this is Stephanie, Hannah's sister. Stephanie has chosen the Triodos Impact Ethical ISA. This has a 43.7% return over the last five years and was launched in 2007. So starting off, this is an ISA, an individual savings account. And as we know, ISAs are tax free. So that could be potentially very attractive to someone like Hannah, Stephanie, meaning that they don't have to pay tax on um, gains made uh, within their return. It has a 43.7% return over the last five years, which we can see is slightly below what we'd expect from an ethical fund, according to the moneyfacts.co.uk table, but of course more than what all non-ethical funds got, of course, that being an average. And it was also launched in 2007, which means that there's a significant track record of success. So she's chosen a fund that has 16 years of, uh, of track record, and therefore she's chosen a fund that actually has a much longer period of operation than what Hannah has chosen. Ironically, of course, Hannah was the one who wanted to choose an investment which had a track record of success. Option two, Stephanie's research continues. To ensure all companies we invest in have a positive social and environmental impact, we follow a three-step investment approach. And this is taken from triodos.co.uk. The first step is filter in the good. First, we positively screen for companies that contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and meet one of our own transition themes. These themes are essential to a transition to a sustainable future. Each one stems from the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which aim to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure prosperity for everyone. So firstly, we can see that this fund, this ISA, looks for sustainable organisations that contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Something like ending poverty, protecting the planet and ensuring prosperity for everyone. Moving on to page nine, the second step is filtering out the bad. Using negative screening, we sift out any companies that have a harmful impact on people and planet, such as products and services related to arms, fossil fuels, tobacco, gambling and animal testing. So the Triodos ISA does not invest in any organisations, companies that have harmful impacts upon people and the planet. Harmful impacts upon people, of course, include arms, uh, the, the weapons industry, tobacco, and gambling. But of course, the planet is, of course, things like burning fossil fuels. I'm sure you've seen in the news that several 
fossil fuel producing organisations have just posted record profits. So the fact that Triodos chooses or or makes investment choices that avoid these organisations, some may say that it is not wise because you might suffer from lower returns. That said, filtering out the bad does meet the ethical interests and desires of Stephanie and Hannah. The third step in Triodos's process is financial and sustainability analysis. We then conduct an integrated financial and sustainability analysis. This looks at the potential impact of economic, social and environmental changes on a company and its financial performance. So from this paragraph, it seems that there's a real focus for Triodos on ensuring that um, that their investments are sustainable in the long term. It looks at external factors such as the impact of ex economic factors, social changes and of course environmental changes on the company and its financial performance. So it really takes into account external factors and just looking at that three-step process an investor can be can, can be confident that Triodos takes a very um, thorough uh, view of vetting its investments, its, its companies that it chooses to put money into. And let's come on to option three. This is Christina's research. Now Christina has chosen the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. This is actually one of her own investment trusts. She invested £10,000 into it 10 years ago. As of October 2021, the investment was worth £107,553. So that is a return over 10 years. The investment is not classed as an ethical fund and the fund was launched in 1909. This is by fidelity.co.uk. The Scottish Mortgage Investment Trusts. The fact is, Christina, as we said earlier on, has been investing for a significant amount of time. She worked in the financial services industry and she has chosen the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. So that suggests that it will be a very wise thing for her daughters to to choose based upon the fact that it's been so successful for Christina. However, the key point in this paragraph is of course that it's not classed as an ethical fund. Do her daughters value a higher return? Like we can see with this investment trust, a significant return. Or do they value ethical investing to a greater extent? That could be a great, it depends upon point, in your essays. The Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust was also launched over 100 years ago in 1909. So if Hannah really, really wants a fund or a trust with a significant track record of success, then she could do a lot worse than the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. 1909, over 115 years of operation, obviously significantly more so than option one or option two. So how well do you think you know this case study? I've created a 60 question quiz for you to test your understanding and comprehension of this case study. Get all 60 questions right, you'll be guaranteed a good mark in the exam. Make sure you hit the link at the top of the screen right now. When recommending one of these three options, there are a number of things which you have to take into account. My next video will be an evaluation of these three options, and following that, I'll be providing a model answer to a number of questions you may potentially get asked in the exam. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when these videos are released. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one.